We're making nachos. Well, hang on. We're making chorizo melty cheesy nachos with a whole ton of shit on them. I just counted like 15, 16 ingredients, which is completely not me. I, I, I want to be the master of three or four things, make a fantastic meal, dish, appetizer, late night snack, whatever. But in this case, in this particular case of the world's best nachos, I gotta put a bunch of stuff into it. And one of the keys to nachos, did I just spit? One of the keys, <laughs> one of the keys to nachos is the cheese. Of course, we all recognize how important it is, but I find the cheese becomes a clumpy, coagulated, dry, disgusting off plane. Off plane. It's just like a B-50 fucking two overhead. Could use a little anger management. Just no question about that. But I find that the typical way of making nachos, of sprinkling uh, uh, shredded cheese on top and then putting it in the oven or the microwave, is fine for a couple of minutes. But, but more than a couple of minutes after it's come out, it starts to get hard and coagulate and be clumpy and gross. That's where we're making a cheese sauce. It'll be luxurious, it'll be divine, it'll cover everything, and you'll be able to scoop and dip and swim through it, and it'll be, I don't really mean swim through it. You have to make an awful lot to swim through it. Shoot some videos on YouTube, people do some big ass stuff. Maybe we could collaborate. A pool of cheese sauce in my nachos. Mr. Beast, call us. Mr. Beast, call us, right. Okay, but here we go. So, uh, I don't know if I said, these are chorizo-based nachos. What's typical? Ground beef, chicken. I'm a chorizo fan. Let's get this in my pan. We'll start it cooking and we're almost home. Oh, and by the way, we have a poll. What are your favorite nacho toppings? Your favorite? Just answer, simple. So we start with the chorizo. We just squeeze it. I know it's gross at this point into the pan. Come on, get off, there we go. Now we use chorizo for the chorizo cream for the enchiladas. We made the other day, which by the way, if you haven't made them yet, you must. This is a little different though, because we want this chorizo to get to the point where it's almost a little crumbly. And that's gonna require some, some cooking in here. So we're gonna give this just a little bit of time in the pan, but just start like this. You can prep our other ingredients while this is getting to that spot. Because now it's just a mess. Next up is this cheese sauce that I spoke so warmly about it because I love it. So we got a couple tablespoons of butter in here that will go on the heat. It's gonna melt and when it does, the magic of video, I think once you have chorizo nachos, you will say goodbye to ground beef nachos forever. And just as the butter melts, we add two tablespoons of flour and we mix. We've done this before, it's called a roux, it's a thickening agent. We're gonna introduce a liquid in a second, but you wanna give it, you know, a minute or so to get rid of the raw flour taste because that's not what you're going for. You're going for it thickening, not the flavor of the flour. And when we're there, we'll add two cups of milk, then mix. And now over the next few minutes, that's gonna to start to thicken, and then we'll get ready to add our cheese. Meantime, don't forget about the chorizo starting to get where we want. So we need two cups of cheese. One will be Monterey Jack, I have already shredded. And the other one will be this Chipotle smoked Gouda. So I just have to shred some. I just need a cup or an approximate cup. Give it a little that. Beautiful. Meanwhile, the chorizo is starting to cook, dry nicely. It's not nearly as mushy as it was a few minutes ago. Summer. Uh-oh, Summer's going for scraps. Wait! Trees are scraps. What are you doing? I can't even see your eyes. The, uh, the milk and the flour and the butter are almost to the point where they're thickening. Then we'll add the cheese. But as I'm standing here looking at these, look, I know there's a place in the world for like ballpark and, and convenience store and gas station nachos. But, but those are not at home. Home takes a, a little more. You know what I'm saying? your place, your house, whether you've got like this backyard or no backyard, a little balcony or no balcony and a small kitchen, you can eat better. That's what we're here for. 
I want you to eat better. Not shittier, not worse, not the same as you can out, but better. And honestly, making these things yourself is going to get you there. Get what I'm saying? You feel me, dog? You feel me, dog. I said that to my father once. He's now passed away. I said, you feel me, dog? He goes, what the hell are you talking about? Not the warmest man on the planet, I've got to say. Okay, so look. See this? This is perfect. I'm very happy with, not the helicopter above me. Ah, it's like MASH. Remember the TV show MASH? That's what's happening. It's San Diego. Okay, so when your chorizo is like this, dry, not, not, not still wet, and we wanna put it in a bowl, and we're taking it out because this is the pan that our nachos are gonna be made in, you don't need to dirty two pans. So we take it out, and all this flavor on the bottom is just gonna make everything better. Just take the pan off for a sec, set it aside. And now turn your attention to the milky roux that you've just made, slowly thickening, and now we'll add our cheese. Let's add this chipotle gouda, and then about a cup of Monterey Jack, and then we mix. Give it a good mix. Look at that, look how pretty. And when you're beautifully silky like this, then we'll add a little garlic powder, about a half a teaspoon. Now, this can just sit on low heat, that. Imagine dragging your chips through that instead of that cardboard-like cheese that doesn't do anything, it just sticks to the chip. And we have gardeners approaching. Okay, so while I'm here, we should taste it. Always taste. Oh. The garlic, the little chipotle gouda, definitely needs some salt. And look, cheese is inherently salty. I'm not adding salt to increase the salt level. I'm adding salt to make the cheese cheesier. That's the idea. We've talked about this. Salt makes things taste like what they should taste like. Lemon in a cake is more lemony because of salt. This, this Monterey Jack and, and Chipotle smoked Gouda is better because of a little hit of salt. Not saltier, better. Let's build this thing, huh? Let's go. And we start with the pan that we cook the trees in, because why not? First thing we add is a layer of chips. And look, chips are a very personal thing. Use what you like. They make them round, they make them square, they make them rectangular. I, don't, don't get wrapped up in the shape I'm using. Somebody's gonna write, F idiot, you should have used round ones. You should have used those scoopy ones. Look, they're like cowboy boots. It's a very personal thing. Use the ones you like. Get it? And once you have your layer of chips, we need first, a layer of cheese. Melty, pourable cheese. Not too much, more is coming, but we do need a nice base coat. <laughs> base coat. <laughs> now we come in with some chorizo. So a little more cheese. And then some toppings and let's have some fun. So we're gonna add some green onion. We get a little stack. We cut. And then you get some green onion over the top. I'm a fan of olives and I found these little packs of them. They're outstanding. Some black olives on top, here we go. Max thinks olives on nachos are whack. Jilly and I think they're a must have. You make your own decision. Look, I said it, it's a personal thing. Make them the way you want. If you want a chip and cheese and that's it, then just have that. But I'm here to say, hey, you could make a better version. And that's what the, these guys are. All right, uh, next, a little red onion. So a little, get off. Green onion, fuck off. What are you doing, man? I like these thin little slices. And now let's scatter these over the top. Oh boy, not to you, not like that. Come on, separate a bit for goodness sakes. I know we already have crunch on there, but I'm gonna add some of these French fried onions because why the f not? Just a little. We're almost there. The chorizo gives a nice little bite, but not as much as sliced jalapenos. You know there's definitely your friends that are gonna be like, dude, or dude, et, where are the jalapenos? So they're there for those that like them. 
Who likes avocado? So I do, and I like it on here. We're gonna cut it, we're not gonna throw it on until right at the end. Oh, and it's a nice one too. We're gonna just make little slices all the way down and then this way. And when you cut through, you're gonna get diced avocado. Okay, so that's ready, that's ready. Let's throw in a little crumbled cotija cheese. And cotija is like the, um, the Mexican feta. Wow, how gorgeous that is. And when you think you have it just perfect, everything in its place, everything you want, you do it again. Some more cheese. Look, this ensures one thing. Every bite, get some of everything. I promised you great nachos. I'm not playing games here. Fucking playing, god damn it. What is this? Why are they doing this to me? Go away! Green onion, some red onion, olives. Gosh, I love those. The jalapenos, some crispy onion, a little more cotija. Look at that. And you want people to know there's chorizo, so don't bury it. Let your chorizo flag fly on top, as gorgeous as that is. Then that avocado we spoke about and cut beautifully over the top. Because see, here's what's happened. You've cut the avocado with those little shapes inside. So when you cut them, they come out in these little squares. Perfect to add on top. So with a little more cheese left that you hate to waste, you give it a little bit of this. Oh boy. You know how this is gonna be. You can just sense it. And then a little torn cilantro. And when I say torn, I mean literally just like you're just ripping the pieces of the leaves off. And before my bite, just a little Cholula because I am a Cholula person. And here we go. In, you need chorizo. You need I mean, everything. I don't know how to make this happen. Wow. Look, melty. You know what doesn't need to be here? This fork. Nacho should be a finger thing, right? Let's go right here. Get these chips. Try and get, oh boy, this is gonna be difficult. Mmm. Mmm. Like every bite's different. Those chorizo, olive, cilantro. This one? Green onion, red onion, and the cheese is forward. Mm. Avocado at the end. It's like a, um, a um, what the hell is that called? It's like a treasure hunt. What are you gonna find? You're gonna find chorizo, mm. jalapeno, damn it. These are nachos, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it's all about. What it's not all about are dried out, stuck on, glutinous cheese nonsense that is not delicious. That was effing delicious. See? Somebody asked me not to swear. And I said effing. I didn't say fucking. I was about to, but see how I held myself back. Oh boy. Make them the way you want. I'm just telling you that this portable cheese and a shit ton of everything, those are nachos. And here's the amazing thing five minutes later, the cheese is still cheesy. It's not all hard and disgusting. That's the way to go.